Y'all ever do uh, breath work before? I got just a guy coming in. Get ready. It's the Ice Jesus. Oh, here he comes right now. What's up, Phil? What's up, man? Everything good? Yeah. Let's do this. All right, guys, so welcome back. And yes, I do have the so-called, AKA Ice Jesus, Avi's here in the building with me, and he's gonna bring me through some breath work training, right? And maybe hit the ice bath? Yeah, that for sure. Yeah, Can yeah. you give them a rundown of actually like how you got started in this and, and who you learned from too as well? If I was dealing with some anxiety, depression, and I ended up watching a Vice documentary on Wim Hof, mm -hmm. and I thought if I could match his energy, replicate his breathing and his cold training, then mm -hmm. I could get my my life back on track. Fast forward a year later, I'm on Mount Hood in Oregon, climbing Mount Hood with Wim in our shorts, Ice Cap Mountain. A year later, I'm training with Brian McKenzie in New York mm -hmm. and Dan Brule when he came to New York and I basically just became a sponge mm -hmm. for any breathwork coach that I could find. You're gonna run me through this actual method yeah. of training too. Yeah, yeah, for Now, sure. what's the benefit of what we're gonna do today? It's gonna slow your heart rate down. Mm -hmm. It's gonna drop your blood pressure, but in a comfortable, safe way. We're gonna tap into other states of your nervous system. Mm -hmm. We're gonna tap into a more focused state, a more aware state. Sure. So if you're working with fighters, you're working with someone in the gym, it's going to help them gain a better understanding of their own physiology through breathing. Breathing is the first and most basic foundational movement we have. Everything builds off of that. I do a lot of Wim Hof breathing, so yeah. this is going to be fun for me to cool. actually go through somebody that actually learned from him. Yeah. And then also the cold plunge too yeah. as well, right? So what is the benefits of the actual cold in general? If you're using it in recovery, it's going to help to lower inflammation. Mm -hmm. It's going to help boost adrenaline. Mm -hmm. It's going to boost dopamine. It's going to put you into this very deeply relaxed state after you're able to control your breathing. On the initial drop into the cold, your breathing is going to get short and frenetic. So we're going to work on down regulating that breath, getting mm -hmm. your breathing to match your heart rate and mm -hmm. slowing everything down. And that's when all the benefits kick in. That's nice. when your body starts to really get that anti-inflammatory benefits to it. You boys ready? <laughs> Got the Vivos, man? Yeah, man. Shout out to Vivo Barefoot. Even my man's rocking them too yeah. as well. One thing is called breath awareness. That's when you just notice your breathing. You start to notice like, oh wow, I'm breathing in my mouth or my throat's dry or I'm breathing into my chest or mm -hmm. I'm breathing short and frenetic. The second thing is conscious breathing. That's when we actually start to consciously control our breathing, which as humans, that's something that we do that no other animal does. No other animal literally says, I'm gonna hold my breath now for a minute and see what happens. In breath holds, like Wim Hof breathing or other kinds of breathing, when you go into a breath hold, initially you get into a very relaxed state. It calms your nervous system. Mm. Then all of a sudden, that carbon dioxide starts to kick up, that urge to breathe, that oxygen hunger kicks up, yep. and then stress comes into the picture. We work on what's your first breath back in after a long hold. So we work on that and we try to create this awareness around when stress hits your system. We've discussed fighters, how some guys train super hard, they're dialed in, but then when it's time to actually perform, when the lights get bright, mm -hmm. they just don't have it. There's something that doesn't click. Yep. A lot of times that has to do with the way your body responds to high level stress. Gotcha. So we use the breathing, we use the cold to bring in these tactile forms of stress to create a higher resilience around stress, a higher understanding of what our body does when stress hits it. What we'll do now is I'm going to ask you, so I'm going to use the, the Corgis ball. Okay. This is a tool I use with my athletes. I use this with my CEOs, mm -hmm. with, with all my clients that want to go a little bit deeper. I'm going to ask you to lie mm -hmm. flat on the ball, belly down, mm -hmm. navel underneath the ball gotcha. or over the ball rather. So the ball right underneath, exactly like that. So exactly how you're doing right now, you're using your arms to kind of brace the body here. Mm -hmm and I want you to start to activate your breathing and I want you to focus on exhaling and relaxing. It's a good full breath and then relax. And then when you start to feel more comfortable and also a way you can modify this, why don't you go ahead and pull this leg, the knee right here to your hip, exactly. Yep. So now all of a sudden, you're taking a little bit of the pressure off of your midsection, you're taking a little bit of pressure off your torso and you're creating a little bit more weight around it. Mm -hmm. All right, and as you get more comfortable, you can slowly start to flatten out the upper body down. And if, yeah, if you feel good to do that, now I want you to take another big breath in. And you start to notice the back becomes engaged. 60% of your lungs are located in your back. A lot of times when people think about breathing, they're thinking about front, front side breathing. But in reality, his ribs here, I want you to breathe into my hands. Good, activating the rib cage and easy on the exhale. Good, and then I compress the ribs here. So go ahead and squeeze and breathe into my hands. Good, 
See that? Look at the difference there. Ease it out, let it go. And then you relax on the exhale. Your body relaxes. That's what happens. When you exhale, you actually lower your heart rate. When you inhale, it's more activating. So go ahead and breathe into my hands again. Good. Easy, slow exhale, neutral exhale. I always think of it like a neutral, passive exhale. Perfect. Two more, just like this. Right in. And the more your rib cage engages and gets activated, the more room your diaphragm is going to have. So a lot of times people think it's either belly or, or chest breathing. Actually, the diaphragm is going to be the thing that's going to dictate the amount of range of motion that your diaphragm actually has to expand. All right, good. Let's go ahead and drop this leg and go ahead and pull up the next one, the other one. Yep. And you can see too, as he's getting more comfortable, he's able to lie further flat onto the ball. And then if you're someone that starts using this ball regularly, you're gonna find more room in your diaphragm, more room in your breathing muscles. You're gonna start to activate the back more. And you're gonna just start to feel your whole mechanism engaged as you breathe. Nice and smooth in. Good. And then relax on the exhale. Let your body relax. Perfect. Stay with it. Easy in. And even though he might not be able to feel it, heart rate's slowing down here. Blood pressure is slowing down. So I would use this ball before a workout. I would use this ball even before a breathwork session just to get the, the diaphragm and the, and the muscles open and engaged. Go ahead and lie back down on the ball. So put it um, right in the lower part of your back. And this is actually something that becomes kind of like a recovery tool too, where you like, you flatten out, you lay down. And then again, I would probably like, if I was working with someone one-on-one -on -one here, go ahead and relax and release it. And then I would get right up in here. And this is somewhat uncomfortable to start. And you just try to get into this zone where the diaphragm and the rib cage meet. Mm -hmm. So this way we're gonna create some more expansion. Good, big inhale. And then relax on the exhale and empty it out. Good. And then on the exhale, I get in here, because the exhale is relaxing. The exhale is parasympathetic. It's gonna calm your nervous system. So then I kind of do the stressing, stress-inducing sort of stretching here, but this is gonna open it up here. But this is good, this is what you want. You wanna get into the zone here, because the body's supposed to be pliable, it's supposed to be bendable. It's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to get in there. Yeah. You know, if you're stiff and you're cold, that's closer to death. Vibrant, moving, adjusting, all these things are closer to life. Like that's what you want. So then go ahead and take a big breath in. Good. And I want you guys to start thinking about your breath as like a wide breath, like a bell curve. Like the breath should be going all the way into my hands. There you go. And then you relax on the exhale. And you feel that, you feel those ribs engage. I mean, the ribs house the lungs. So that's a big part of the breath. And the, the ribs are the bridge from the chest to the diaphragm. So the more you can activate your ribs, and this just becomes your default, where all of a sudden you feel this is how you're breathing, then you think about when you're in the moments of highest stress, yeah. but your body's designed to breathe this way, you're just gonna go ahead and breathe that way. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna ask you to roll over onto your side, and we're gonna put the ball now right in between your shoulder blades. So right in the middle, you if you need to adjust it, what I'm trying to do here is, yeah, exactly, get your head to rest down. So you wanna open up your chest, you wanna open up the throat, you want this part to open up. This is another thing that I got from yoga too. It's a very restorative pose where you open up the chest, you open up the front part of your body, and you're forcing this part open, and you just kind of breathe in here, and then, again, I would do the same thing with the ribs. I get the ribs activated, and then you just relax the shoulders, you get nice and loose on the exhale. Good. For all the stuff I was doing in there with him, like if you wanted to get into the front body and really dig your hands in there, you can literally just use your hands and you can use some manipulation with your hands and you can really just get into the diaphragm. There's another one, go ahead and do this fill like this and go ahead and use your thumbs to massage into your diaphragm. And you just start to feel your body, um, just connect to it in a different way. I do a lot of belly breathing, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. diaphragmatic breathing. And um, using that tactile cue, almost like crocodile breathing too as well. Exactly. You can load it on your totally. spine. Like I put either you know five pound plate on my back so I yeah. can get that expansion in the backside. Um, as a lifter, you know it's it's very important to yeah. increase that that um, infra like that diaphragmatic breathing and then the intra abdominal pressure too yeah. as well. So using that before a lift can definitely help for your power lifters out there that would be beneficial. And then for our fighters, especially for before a fight, 
Yeah. Bring down heart rate. I was just thinking about that, doing that, you know, in the locker room before you go out there. Yeah, absolutely. Pre-fight. And then also, you start to create breath holds at the bottom of your exhale. Yep. You wait for that first urge to breathe. Mm -hmm. When you get that first urge to breathe, like I mentioned, the recovery breath, if you can make that breath nasal, you're mm -hmm. increasing your nitric oxide, yep. which is a vasodilator. It's going to mm -hmm. help your blood flow. It's a bronchodilator. It's going to open up your veins. It's yep. going to open up your lungs. It's really good for you. So pre-fight, that's what I would. That's what I'd be working on with fighters. I'd be trying to get them to get into some breath holds, mm -hmm. get comfortable in the breath holds, increasing the length of the hold yep. as you get closer to the fight, just to get them a little bit more dialed in. Because breath holds can be really almost intense and stressful in moments, but it can also be calming too, which is sort of leaning into a nice flow state. It's sure. kind of already tapping into that state for you. So what's next? Cool, we're gonna do some breathing. I'm gonna guide you. My goal for you guys is for you guys to check out. Prefrontal cortex, front part of your brain is always firing, always processing. So the goal here is that we're gonna check out. Mm. We're gonna just focus on our bodies. We're just gonna let go a little bit. 